Well, all right, you guys, here we are in the Fagahatchee Strand Preserve State Park. What should we do today? Should we hike on Jane Scenic Drive all the way out to the Picayune Strand, about four miles? Should we hike out to the world famous Fakahatchee Hilton, about two miles down East Main Tram? It's always a rough hike or bike ride out there. You guys might remember my last Thanksgiving from the front porch of the Fakahatchee Hilton video when I rode my mountain bike all the way out there. I don't know if any of you guys know anybody, but I'm gonna put in a shameless request. We need to start an email campaign. Some of these electric bike companies with the big fat tires get me an electric bike sponsorship because I can't do this anymore. So I've pedaled my bike out there and back probably 20 times. It's always a rough ride on this old logging tram with this muddy spots and potholes. It's always a mission. Last night I did have a dream that one of these electric bike companies sent me a big fat tire electric bike. Wow, you guys, look at this. It's a mock wheel Upland Plus in green. It's just what I wanted. Huge fat tire e-bike. Look at this thing, it's awesome. Wow, this thing's got Shimano gear shifters. Look at this LCD screen that shows you your energy bar, your speed, your odometer. It's got a light on the front. Oh, sweet. And look at this thing. It's got a light on the back. It also lights up when you apply the brakes. Look at this big cargo rack. It's just what I need to carry my tripod and my cooler out there. Got a kickstand. Look at this Shimano Tourney derailers. Got a 48 volt, 750 watt electric motor. Disc brakes on the front and rear. Full suspension shocks. Fenders. Wow, this thing is awesome. Look at this big old soft cushiony seat. Man, this thing is sweet. Man, got a throttle here. Got your pedal assist levers. Nice LCD for knowing what's going on. Got your light there. What's this right here? Oh, it was just a dream. Oh, I guess we're going to be hiking the 1.7 miles out to the Fakahatchee Hilton. Oh, oh well. Uh, wait, what? What in the ghost of Totch Brown is this? It's a mock wheel Upland Plus fat tire e-bike. Oh my goodness. And it's in green. Yeah, that's just what I wanted. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I guess dreams do come true. Let's get this thing unboxed. Oh, this must be Christmas in July. Oh my gosh, what is in here? Oh, wow. That's a bike, pre-assembled. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Accessories, tires and fenders, cargo rack. Oh man, that's awesome. Man, it's my lucky day. I'm gonna go ahead and set up another camera. We're gonna get that thing unboxed, assembled, and we're gonna put it to a torture test. Oh yeah. Oh man, I am so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down the sides of this box right here, create like a little garage to where I can Fold this down and get this bike assembled. Oh yeah. I've seen people try to lift the bike out from the box standing next to it and that just seems too hard. Make your life easy. And create a little work area here. All right, ready for the big unveil? Yeah, that is awesome. Let's see what we got in here. We got the accessory box. Looks like the 
handlebars and cables all pre-assembled, which is awesome. There's the LCD screen. Lots of good packing material. Lots of tie wraps. What's back here? This is the battery, which I was smart enough to take out and pre-charge last night. So we'll have plenty of juice to get around today. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead now and probably speed up the video a little bit. I'm gonna cut off all these tie wraps and get it a little more ready to put together. Everything looks good. No damage from shipping. Looks like it's packaged really well. Let's go through the accessory box here, see what's in there. There's your user manual. There's our pedals. Got a left and right pedal and they're marked on the bottom. Uh, got a pump. That's pretty good. Got some wrenches. Got some reflectors. Oh, here's a nice hex key set. So that should be everything you need to get the bike assembled in the field. Got a nice little bag here with some bolts in case you want to put some accessories in the pre-drilled holes there. Front basket or cell phone holder, anything. Some tie wraps and these look like replacement brake pads. So that's pretty awesome. So this thing is like a bike in a box. You get the bike get all the tools you need to put it together. So it's a true test of this, doing this unboxing and assembly out in the field. So let's keep going. I did read the user manual before coming down here and it's got really nice assembly instructions. It's got all the tools and everything that came with it and it shows you the steps to do to get the bike assembled. So let's go ahead and start that now. The first thing you do is you get the handlebar stem turned the right way. So you just use one of your hex keys here and you loosen up these bolts. There's one on each side. And then from there, you're able to turn the stem around just like that. I want to kind of get it roughly lined up with the front of the forks there and then go ahead and tighten them up. Not too tight because there's going to be some adjustments afterwards but go ahead and get them tightened down to where they won't move around on you while you're assembling the bike and the next step is to adjust or take this little piece off so you can get the handlebars up and in there and once you get the last bolt out why is another reason why it's nice to fold this down because you have a nice little spot to put all your little parts so you don't lose them. But then the next step is to get the handlebars and swing them up into position. Be sure you got everything oriented the correct way and you just slide it right in there. Kind of use these markings on the handlebars here to get it in the center. And then you got to put your little bracket back on. All right, looks pretty good. Everything's right there in the center. Just enough tension to where I can position them where I want. And we'll uh, tighten them down fully after that. So I think the next step is to put on the front fender, which I know goes this way, and these screw on there, but you gotta take this bolt off to put the front headlight in its place right there. So, I'll go ahead with the hex key, see if we can get this off. Oh. 
And this goes up here. Put that bolt on the back. Start to tighten her down again. Get that screwed on tight. Starting to come together. Looks like I need the little hex key to get these off. So go ahead and do that. Nice to have my crow helper behind me telling me what to do. <laughs> oh. Keep your cardboard in front of you. Don't laugh at me, crow. Well, that was by far the hardest part of this whole operation. That was harder than helping the FedEx guy get this thing out of his truck. So I had to take a little break, but now we're back. The next thing that we gotta do is put on the front wheel. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bike upside down. Flip it over. Oh. This thing is pretty heavy. Might need two people will be helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and Got to get this kind of protector out of here. We'll use the wrenches that come with it. All right. Once we get that off, we're ready to set in the front wheel. You can see the brake caliper here. You got to line the disc up with that and it should slide right in. Look down and line it up and get it in that little gap. And then you're able to get the tire all the way down. You can see that it's rubbing some, so I'm going to have to make an adjustment there. And then just get these washers and these, tighten them on there. All right, I got those good and tight. Well, I got it upside down like that. Might as well put on the pedals. You got one with an R and one with an L. So this is the R over here. Stick it in there and get the dirt off. Left side in. We'll spin it on. Tighten this one down. All right. There it is. This one sounds pretty good. Definitely something rubbing here. I'll check the manual to be sure how to release that pressure on the brake caliper there, but I think that is it. So let's get this thing turned back around. That thing is a beast. Got a kickstand. Whew. Yeah. That looks pretty awesome. So that wasn't too bad. That was probably a half an hour assembly, even with the break that I took after trying to get that front fender on. That was probably the hardest part of the whole thing. I'm gonna go ahead and sit on there, get it adjusted for my handlebars the way I want them and then I will I'm going to put some lube on my chain I'll ride it around here to get acclimated to everything be sure everything is adjusted properly and then we'll put this thing to the test 
Well, here she is all assembled and ready to go. I did some adjustments to the brakes. I added some lube to the chain and some of the other components. I put some slime in my tires, so hopefully I don't get a puncture. I used some of the packing material to put on the cargo rack so I could put my tripod on here with my sweet camouflage bungee cord. Oh yeah. So we're gonna take this thing out to the Fakahatchee Hilton for her maiden voyage. I think that's very fitting that the first place I take her is down East Main Tram to the Fakahatchee Hilton. I'm gonna just ride down here nice and slow just to continue to get acclimated with the bike, but I will probably put the GoPro on along the way, talk about how it rides and how it functions. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started first with pedal assist mode zero, which is just you pedaling the bike, just as if it wasn't an e-bike and didn't have the motor. So it's definitely big and heavy. You can tell that it's, you know, pretty hard to pedal it normally, but you definitely could in the event that your battery died or had an electrical problem somehow. So to kick in the motor, all I got to do is hit this up arrow right here to go into pedal assist mode number one. And the motor senses you pedaling and will take off. So you're continuing to pedal, but you're not really providing much power. The motor is doing all the work for you. I can also use the throttle here on the right and pull it back without pedaling at all. And it'll go up to, I believe, 10 miles an hour, which is the max speed for pedal assist mode number one. So that's pretty nice just to be able to use the throttle only, not have to use your legs at all. That's pretty sweet. Very responsive on the throttle. You just pull it back a little bit and it kicks forward. This is plenty fast enough for East Main Tram here. You can see these big potholes. You really want to pay attention to what you're doing. So it's kind of nice that I'm able to sit up tall and look and see where you're going. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I used my horn. That was awesome. Cruising into the Fakahatchee Hilton in style. That was awesome. Whew. I'm not even breathing heavy, not even sweating. That was beautiful. A Fakahatchee Hilton and the Mach Wheel Upland Plus. Well, we made it to the Fakahatchee Hilton. You can see my odometer says two miles. That was awesome. My first impressions, this thing is a beast. These humongous fat tires went right through those soft muddy spots without even wobbling at all. So that was super cool. Using the pedal assist, pedal assist one, two, three, four, five, then you go back down to zero. And again, zero is just you pedaling with no assistance from the motor at all. I was finding that pedal assist number one, which lets you go up to about 10 miles an hour, either pedaling and the motor kicks in, or if you use the throttle only, it still is limited to 10 miles an hour. And coming in on this rough tram road with the muddy spots and the rocks sticking up and the logs, that was, plenty fast enough. A couple times I did go into pedal assist mode number two and if you just give it a little bit of throttle you can really feel that thing take off. So I think that goes up to 20 miles an hour or so in pedal assist number two and then each mode you go up it just gives you a little faster and faster. I think the maximum speed on it is around 29 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. I've seen some people get them up to in their review videos but the speed limit in the Fakahatchee on East Main Tram here, and I think Jane Scenic Drive is 20 miles an hour, so always obey those rules. I was thoroughly impressed. 
The throttle is very responsive. The horn, I used it. Um, going through the different pedal assist modes was a piece of cake. The shocks were very nice. Some of these bumps that I went over, it was pretty smooth. The cargo rack was really nice and letting me put my tripod up there or when I come out here to do my next Thanksgiving dinner, I'll have my cooler strapped up there. But the seat was very comfortable. So in all, so far so good. I was very impressed. I want to sit here a minute and just go through the manual a little bit. I read through it a time or two already. And you can see it's just got some safety precautions. Be sure you're adjusted everything, which I did. I adjusted the brakes, make sure the seat, the handlebars, the grips and everything were nice and tight. Always wear a helmet out here, significantly reduce head injuries. Fortunately, I've only had one incident out here riding my mountain bike. So that was pretty alarming. That was went right over the handlebars. And that's another thing I want to mention about this bike. The geometry of it, it was super comfortable. The seat, you can put it down really low and the grips and the handlebar are up a lot higher, which allows you to sit upright with much better posture. When I hit that rock and went over the handlebars on my old mountain bike, the bars, handlebars there and the seat are almost at the same level. So you're really hunched over the whole time and it puts a lot of strain on your shoulders and it kills your neck because you're constantly having to look up. With this setup here, with the seat this much lower and the handlebars pulled back a little bit, I was really able to sit up with a nice, comfortable posture. Didn't put any strain on my shoulders, even carrying my big camera backpack. So that I knew was gonna be a big difference and a big advantage over my old mountain bike. So that was super cool. I really appreciate that. Being able to adjust that is really nice. Another precaution I saw in here is make yourself more visible by wearing bright reflective clothing. I can understand if you're in the city riding around with other cars and things, but being in here in the swamp, there's bears all over the place and I gotta wear my camouflage so they don't see me. That's why I was really happy to get this bike in this dark, almost camo green because wearing my camo shirt and this camo bike, I'll be able to hide from the bears. <laughs> yeah. I got the bike set up in probably a half an hour or so. So that wasn't any trouble at all. All the tools you need comes in the box. So you can come out here like I did and just assemble it and ride it in the same day, like a bike in a box. Here's the LCD and the odometer instructions. There's lots of different pages on that odometer there, the display, and you just hit combinations of the buttons to go from different pages. You can change the metric to miles so you can Change that if you want to. Reset your odometer. LCD controls, the pedal assist. Battery charging, I did that already. Charger care. Talking about the brakes here, which I adjusted already. Those are really nice. Then just here's some safety checklist, some care. Keep it clean, keep it lubricated. Stop some rust, troubleshooting. There's some codes, I guess, that come up on the odometer. LCD screen, different code, so you can troubleshoot those. Here's some warranty information, more troubleshooting. So it's a very nice user manual. It's nice to get one in paper versus just a PDF file. So being able to take this out here and use it while you're assembling the bike and then going on a shakedown cruise and seeing how you can troubleshoot things if need be or make some adjustments. So that was pretty sweet. So, so far, I'm very happy. I'm going to take this thing now back down to Jane Scenic Drive. I'm going to go out in the Picayune Strand, take a trail camera all the way out four miles on it. So we'll do some more testing and videos when we're out there on Jane Scenic Drive. There's a rough spot coming up right here. Lots of mud, tire ruts, cypress roots. Oh man. Oh, I'm going to get my new bike dirty. Yikes. Whew. It went right through that with no problem. Those fat tires, it didn't even wobble. That was awesome. That was in pedal assist mode number one, which gives you 
just enough torque to get through that when you hit the throttle. That was super nice. My skinny tire mountain bike would have been bobbing and weaving all through that stuff. So this is a lot safer, it feels like. <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I got to use my horn twice. Yeah. Whoa. Here's your wildlife shot for the day. Old gator laying right there. Hey, buddy. You like my new bike? It's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, we'll see you later. Whee! All right, you guys, it is time for phase two of this mock wheel Fakahatchee torture test. The ride back from the Fakahatchee Hilton was just as enjoyable as the ride out there. You can see I got a lot of mud on my tires, but we got four miles on the odometer here. And we're now gonna go out to the end of Jane Scenic Drive to the Picayune Strand, which is 4.23 miles from here as the crow flies. We go up here and make a bend, so it's probably closer to four and a half miles or so. But we've been out there many times. This used to be open for cars. You could take your car all the way out there, but after Hurricane Irma in 2017, they put this gate here and this place has been closed to vehicle traffic ever since. I have ridden my mountain bike out there, my pedal mountain bike, many times, and it's a long way out there and a long way back. All right, through this section of Jane Scenic Drive here, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the pedal assist modes. You can see right now I'm in mode number one, which I think is limited to about 10 miles an hour. I am pedaling at the same time, and I found that the gear lever here, you know, it only has an impact when you're actually pedaling. So when you're just starting off, you should be in, you know, first gear, second gear, but as I was going faster and hitting the button here to go up gears, you could feel the chain engaging and you were pedaling, but you're still not putting a lot of muscle into it. It's the motor that's still controlling everything pretty much. So I'm gonna go back down to a slower gear. I'm in pedal assist number one. I'm gonna stop pedaling now and just, this is throttle only full throttle you can see 9.9 .9 miles an hour I'm gonna hit the button here to go up to pedal assist level number two whoa you can feel it kick in speed ramps up pretty quickly now you're up to 14.8.9 so now I'm going to hit the button one more time to go to pedal assist number three. Woo! Oh. And we're definitely moving now. I'm not pedaling at all. This is full throttle. 19 miles an hour. Pedal assist mode number three. There's some deer up here. Woo! I'll slow down for them. <laughs> that's pretty good all right so let's go back up through here again again it's full throttle pedal assist mode number three that's really about as fast as we should be going on this road it's kind of bumpy Ah, uh, what the heck. Let's try number four, see what that does. Woo! Let's try pedal assist number five, the max level. There we go. It is full throttle. Oh. 
All right, let's go back down to mode number three. I think that got us up to the high teens on the speed, and that's plenty fast enough for this road especially. And that'll conserve your battery when you're in a lower pedal assist mode. It's probably not providing as much power. So you can probably get a lot more range with the lower pedal assist levels and just going slower in general. Here we are. Picayune Strand State Forest. I now got eight miles on my odometer. I think that took me about 15 minutes or so to get out here. There's some high water on the road here. I am not supposed to ride this thing through water. I'm not supposed to get water up to the motor on the back hub especially, but I should be able to get through this little bit of water right there. Swamp happens sometimes. That's more water than I anticipated out here. So this might not have been the best idea or we might have to go to plan B. So we're going back into the Thakahatchee Strand Preserve State Park, but that was the longest ride coming out here four plus miles. I think I got up to 26, 27 miles an hour. But again, the comfort, being able to have the seat lower, your handlebars, back and higher so you're not having to lean forward really 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 makes it a comfortable ride my neck my back feels fine so that is one of the things that i was really looking forward to testing seeing how it worked compared to my old bike you can see now we have nine miles on the odometer and when i was driving earlier it was down a couple of bars on the battery level so I guess we've had nine total miles today and it hasn't even gone off the first bar there. But when you're driving underway, it does go down a little bit. But I think the range they say is 35 to 50 miles, depending on how you drive, probably the air pressure in your tires affects that. But if you're just going full throttle and pedal assist three, four, five, you're probably gonna drain the battery a little faster than if you're going in pedal assist one or two and actually doing some <clears throat> pedaling at the same time. So let's head back into the Fakahatchee Strand State Park again. We'll go back down Jane Scenic Drive the way we just came. And I'll maybe stop along the way and do a little more B-roll footage. But so far this thing is amazing. Just for me to be able to get out here in 15, 20 minutes and not be dying a heat exhaustion because it's already a hundred and something degrees out here. So not having to pedal is a huge advantage. So when it's in pedal assist mode, number one, like it is now, you can just hit the throttle and it'll start taking off. If you're in pedal assist mode zero, you have to actually start pedaling to take off. But if I go in number one here and then I just do a little throttle, you can see that it takes off. And I'm able to sit up on the seat and you get underway so that's cool and then i can just hit up pedal assist two get going a little faster this is a good comfortable speed right here 15 miles an hour roads a little bumpy and you don't want to drive by all oh, the wildlife is out here so it's not a race out here for sure but 15 miles an hour 13 miles an hour pedal assist mode number two with no pedaling just full throttle that's perfect
I'm gonna give you another tip right here. When you know you're gonna be stopping, you're slowing down, put it in pedal assist mode zero before you stop. Because when you stop like this and you go to get off the bike, which I've done a million times today, if you pull the throttle back when it's in one of the pedal assist modes, one through five, when you move this throttle, it jerks away from you. So just when you're leaning the bike to the side or going to put the kickstand up or for whatever reason, just trying to move the bike around, if you hit the throttle in pedal assist mode one through five, it's gonna jerk out of your hands. So I learned that a couple times the hard way already today. So that's a Tim's tip for you. Well, let's go ahead and we'll put this thing back where it started this morning. Do a little final review here. I tell you, it was so enjoyable riding this thing around today. So easy, even though I'm breathing a little heavy now, it's super hot down here. This thing was super easy to assemble. As you saw, everything came in the box that you need, all the tools, all the accessories. So that was very easy. It only took me about a half an hour or so. This cargo rack, super nice. It comes with that free. Holds my tripod right there perfectly. Let's see what we got here in terms of total mileage today. Looks like 15 miles. My energy bar is down a couple bars. It looks like you're gonna get pretty good range out of this thing. But again, the assembly was super cool. Riding out to the Thakahatchee Hilton on that bumpy, swampy, dirty road was no problem at all. These fat tires are super good for that sort of stuff. 750 watt motor, definitely when it kicks in, you feel it for sure. And I got a horn. Oh yeah, that's the best part. So, so far so good. If you guys want to check them out, it's mockwheel, M-O-K-wheel.com. So if you go on there, and I do have a link below, it's an affiliate link, that if you buy a bike using that link, the 10% discount is already applied there, and I get a little commission off the sale of those bikes when you use my link. So if you know of anyone that is looking for a bike, or if yourself, feel free to use my link below get the discount and I get a little commission on the side. So that's great. I really appreciate again, Mock Wheel for reaching out to me, sending me this bike. Hope I did a good job on the review for you. But it was a great day in the Thakahatchee using this Mock Wheel Upland Plus.